Here's a good tip. You got a wood burning stove like this in your shop? Get a little bit of candle wax here. This is wild berry cheesecake flavored. Throw that right on top of there, and the place will smell beautiful any minute. That actually looks like way too much. It's smoking a lot. Man, it smells good in here now. Anyways, today I'm going to talk about the battery setup, the hydraulic hoses, because I got those, um, and a couple more things with the reservoir and that kind of stuff. So first I'm going to go over here and talk about the battery, because I did decide to convert it back to electric start instead of the um, rickety pull start thing that I had set up. So anyways, this is how it is. We got the battery. Mounted right here, I just have a couple pieces of angle iron coming out from the frame that the battery sits in. Um, positive, negative, I have a little switch right here. This is a push button starter. Push that to make it start. How this works is I have a solenoid valve right here. This is from the lawnmower. I'll show you where this is on the lawnmower. And there's, there's two big ports and two small ports. So one of the big ports is this big line from the positive goes on there, and then this other big one is the positive line that goes to the starter on the engine. And then these two little ports, oh, there's also this other little wire right here coming from the positive port to the switch. And then there's two little ports on the solenoid valve. One of them goes to the frame, which is the ground, because the negative runs through the frame, that's the ground. And then the other little one goes to the starter. So big wires both go to the big ports on the solenoid valve, Little one from the positive to the starter, little one from the starter to the solenoid valve, and little one from the solenoid valve to the frame. It's very simple. You, and then you just push this button, pull it down until the engine starts. As simple as that. It's not going to start right now, of course, though, because I don't have this hooked up. Because I always keep that disconnected while I'm working on it, so I don't shock myself or anything like that. So that's the, pretty much the battery. It's, there's not much to it. Um, I might have actually... This is... I'm thinking sort of a temporary setup because this will start it, but it's not going to because I still have to hook up the alternator from the engine to charge the battery while it's running. So this is this will probably just be temporary, but this gets it running. So I want to show you that. And then the big thing of this update is I have the hydraulic hoses. You can see right here all the hoses in there nicely hooked up. Um, I got the hoses from, my dad has connections, he knows people who know people, and we were able to get all these hoses for free, that's right, not for com completely free. So that was, and un that was unexpected though, that was unexpected, but it was a very big, big plus to get all this, because that saved probably $300. Anyways. How this works is, you can see all the hoses up here are nicely set up. We got um, the main line right there comes through to this T, branches off into the inlet of these two valves. The outlet, which is this line and this line, come back here into the filter, back in the tank. And then there's these two lines on the side of each one that go back to the two motors. So back here is the pump, and the original plan for setting up that pump was to use some little hoses like this, because this, this is the relief valve here, and this is the main line goes through here, and this is the port that goes back to the, the reservoir. And the original plan was to have this how is this going to go? Oh yeah, because there's this drain port here too, which is just uh, not under pressure, but it's a drain port that all bi-directional pumps have that. I can explain that if you want me to, but anyways. How I was intending to do this originally is have this like that, and then I'm knocking stuff all over the place, and then this T would have been down and have this go into that drain port. None of that. It's because these don't bend at all. There's no... I mean, so it, it just didn't work. But anyways, I made a plan B, which should have been plan A because it's a lot simpler and probably better. Um, I'm going to get... This is the outlet right here. It goes through there. 
this is the wrong um, fitting for this though. I'm going to get a different fitting that will mount this relief valve right onto there to the pump. And then what I did with the drain port here was instead of running it through the relief valve, the relief line back into the reservoir here, is I got, what was that fit? So the fitting was like this originally. But what I did, that'll focus. So this is what it looked like up on the top. The half inch, um, 37 degree flare hydraulic fitting. But that was way too big and wouldn't work. So what I did was I drilled this out, put this in the lathe, drilled it out, and put a five, no, half inch bolt in there. And then I threaded that, threaded it, put a half inch bolt in. And then I turned the, the bolt down, drilled through it into a, um, a barbed fitting, just like this, but just a lot smaller for this little hose here. That just goes right back up here into the tank. That's a washer bolted on there with a rubber, um, like, I don't know, gasket or whatever in between there with a hole drilled through it that this line goes through into the tank just like that. So that's pretty simple. Works well. Like I said, that line is not under any kind of pressure, so I shouldn't have a problem with that. And the other thing I have to do is get different, because the, the, all the lines are half inch, but the inlet has to be bigger than half inch to prevent cavitation of the pump. So I'm going to do one inch line from here, like in this section. And so I need to get a couple more fittings here and I gotta change this setup here for the inlet, I mean, outlet port, whatever. But, so then another thing, as I was thinking about this whole thing in general and the reservoir here, is that when the tank is going up or down hills, the fluid in the reservoir is going to shift side to side, right? So, that got me thinking, well, will that cause any problems? When the tank's going up the hill, the fluid will move back to the back of the tank and go higher up at the outlet. That's not a problem because it's just not a problem. If the level drops below the inlet from the filter, it doesn't matter because it, the fluid just runs in. But if the tank's going down a hill and the fluid goes to the front of the reservoir and the level drops below the outlet, then the pump's going to start sucking in air and probably cavitate the pump and ruin it. And that, that would be very bad. So I had to figure out how steep of an angle this could run on based on the size of the tank and height of the outlet. So I did some calculations, which I'll show you right now. Okay, so I had to figure out the maximum angle I could run the tank at so that the level of fluid, hydraulic fluid, does not go below the inlet to the pump. Because like I said, if it goes below, then the pump will draw in air, which will most likely ruin the pump. So, first I had to figure out how high the fluid is in the tank, in the reservoir, when I'm on a flat surface, zero degrees. I know that I have 10 gallons of fluid, that's equal to 2,310 cubic inches. I also know the length of the reservoir, 36, and the width, which is 12 inches. So from that, I can just do a simple volume calculation to find the height of the fluid to be 5.35 inches. So that's how high the fluid is when I'm not on a hill. Next, I draw this little side picture here. I know with the length, 5.35 is the height now, and the and I just solved the area of this as 192.6. That's the area of this little side view of the, where the fluid is. Now, I'll come back to that in a little bit, why that's important. I also know that right now, the outlet into the pump, into the pump is four inches above the bottom of the reservoir. So now I go down here into this other picture drawn at an angle. I need to find out what angle this is because I set the bottom fluid over here as four inches above the bottom, same level as the outlet, which would be the maximum angle I can run this at. So quickly I solve the angle, I mean the area, 
of this bottom rectangle here below this triangle. Um, that's just 36 times 4, which is 144. And the area of this bottom rectangle plus the area of this triangle will be equal to the 192.6 I saw for up here. So I simply take the difference of 192.6 and 144 to get 48.6 as the area of this triangle. Now, I can do a simple area calculation from the triangle to solve for the height of it. Area equals 1 half base times height. I know the area and I know the base of 36 inches. Solve for height gives me 2.7 inches as the height right here. Now I take that triangle out of the, separate that out right here, because everything else I don't need anymore. I know the base of 36, height of 2.7, and I need to know this angle right here. So to do that, I can take the inverse tangent of 2.7 over 36. See, Dr. Robo, I did learn something from trig class. So, and that gives me 4.29 degrees, which is roughly a 2% grade, which is absolute garbage. That, mean, that would mean that I can't go down any hills that are greater than 4 degrees. I would have to go down every hill in reverse. So that's obviously not going to work. So now I come over here and I work backwards. I decide to solve for a 15 degree angle, which is roughly an 11% grade, which isn't bad. That's pretty good. For a reference here real quick, this hill right out here, that is, I think, oh, what was that? 11 degrees at, ma at its maximum. So 15 degrees, a little more than that, that should be pretty good. If I'm going down a really steep hill, then I can do it in reverse, no big deal. Anyways, back to here. I draw my triangle again, just like I did over here, but instead of solving for the angle and knowing the base and height, I now know the base and angle and I have to solve for the height so I can work backwards through here. From this I can take the tangent of 15 which is equal to the height over 36 that gives me a height of 9.6 inches. Plug that back in here, do the area calculation of a triangle, find the area of this to be 172.8 again the area of that plus this rectangle is going to be equal to the 192.6. Take the difference of that, area of this bottom rectangle is 19.8 um, inches squared. Now I go back to my simple um, length times area, I mean area formula, length times width. I know the length of 36. Uh, I now know, and I know the area of 19.8. So I just multiply, I divide 36 by 19.8, and I get the height of 1.82 inches. So that means that the outlet would have to be um, just under two inches off the bottom to give me a good um, terrain versatility. So now, that gives me a few options. I could just straight up lower the outlet right here. Just lower this. But that would cause problems because as you can see right now, this is pretty much level with this. If I were to lower this down to here, then I really wouldn't be able to bend that short of a hydraulic hose, a one inch hydraulic hose at this type of angle, it just won't work. So what I'm gonna do instead, and I already need to redo this anyways, because this is only half inch right now, and that's gonna have to be an inch. So, what I'm gonna do instead is, I'm gonna keep the outlet at the same elevation it is now, but inside of the tank here, it's gonna come in and down, and like on the bottom. So it'll come out up here, but draw fluid from down here which will give me, which will allow me to go on steeper hills. In fact, I could also have it come down and over here, closer to the middle, which would also which would even be better. So I might do that as well. So, and I'm also going to get a suction strainer to go around the inlet. That will prevent anything from getting into the system that I don't want in the system. Like if there's a little weld bead or something in here that I missed, I don't want that to get in the system because if it does, it'll be very bad. Anyway, so that's where I'm at right now. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna get some fittings for the pump right there, that strainer. I need to get another one of these pillow bearings.
for over here because I don't have one right there. And let's see, just a couple other things. I made a kill switch right here for the engine. This grounds out the engine, turns it off. Um, mounted the seat on there, as you see. I just used the same mount from the lawnmower. It has that bracket on the front and then springs in the back and the seat can adjust forward and back to get the correct placement. Right now it's kind of in the middle, so it'll move a little forward and a little back from right there, which I think is pretty good. So anyways, that's pretty much it for right now. I am hoping I can get this actually running by next weekend, a week from now. I'm not promising anything. I'm not going to promise you a video of this running next week, but that's certainly in the realm of possibility. Like I said, if I just get, I just need to order a few fittings and that kind of stuff. And then, yeah, and that's, that's really my, it. So definitely stay tuned for that. Cause I'm, I'm so excited about this cause I'm, the, I'm so close. I can taste it. I mean, I can't wait to get this running and, and I will film it. I will film the maiden voyage cause I want you guys to experience that with me. So. Thanks for watching and I'll see you hopefully next week, if not just...